Hello, everybody. My name is Tiffany. I'm the Tipsy Artist. Cheers. And today we are going live to paint this super cute Latte Love little Christmas cat. So fun. All right, so we have the traceable that's all. Let me give you a little visual on this real quick. So your kit comes with this traceable, makes it super fun and easy, has everything that you need. And so it has uh, the paint, the canvas. Your canvas has some depth to it. It's really nice canvas. And um, your brush set. Here, let me give you a little visual. And your traceable, washi tape, permanent marker, three brushes, all that fun stuff. Apron, napkins, mixing plates. Yippee, lots of fun stuff there for y'all. All right, so I have worked ahead and I've gone ahead and done my line work, but I wanted to give you a little explanation of how to do this. So you've got your washi tape that comes with the kit to secure it, but you wanna make sure that your transfer paper, dull side faces up, and then the shiny, darker side faces your canvas. And then I just keep it pretty much in the center. Now with this particular design, I do wanna keep the cat lower because his body is lower to the bottom here. And then I don't have very much farther to go to extend the lines just freehanded towards the end of the canvas. And then I use the color pencil that's provided to go ahead and trace around all the line work. That way you can see it really well, see where you've been. And then I recommend not taping the bottom part of this so that you can kind of peek and check your work a little bit too. And so initially it looks a lot like a pencil rendering. The transfer brings this like graphite look to the, uh, cause it's graphite paper. So it just brings a graphite line, which is like a pencil line on your um, canvas here. And then what I have done, your kit also comes with a permanent marker. So then I take that permanent marker and I reinforce all of that line work. That just really makes it a lot easier for you. Kind of saves a step with, with a lot of time and detail. And then you can also use this at the very end too. So whenever you're completely done and you do have to make sure that your paint is completely dry, but you can use a permanent marker on a completely dry surface. Um, you just wanna make sure and never touch this to wet paint or it will just ruin your permanent marker. You'll have to just unfortunately throw it in the trash because it just dries it up instantly for whatever reason, but it does. Um, so just be careful of that. And other than that, just, you know, go nuts, have fun. It's so much fun to do this. Very definitely uh, made for beginners on this. Uh, so you can order all the supplies at tipsyartist.com and I'll give all the links and everything in the comments below. And I just want to say hello to everybody again. Thank you so much for joining me. Everybody out there on Facebook and YouTube, welcome, welcome. All right, so we're gonna start with our background color first, and I've got a paint kit that's already been opened from another class. So the colors that I'm going to use on this are going to be a primary cyan blue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come in with a, where is my white? Got a white around here somewhere. Aha, titanium white. And then I actually want a little touch of this Viridian, so that makes for a really nice mix in there too. All right, so I have a mixing plate nearby and we're gonna start by, we have a lot of background here to do, so I do want my dollops to be about quarter size, heaping dollops. And I always have a lot of white nearby, a little bit more white than anything else. Let's see, let's do some of this Viridian. Smaller amount of the Viridian, probably just a pea-sized amount of that. And then of course I have a big heaping dollop of the white nearby, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that big heaping dollop. Rinse off my brush again. All right, so let's go with blue, white, and then let's do that Viridian too. Now that's, this is all pretty dark right now. It's definitely getting to that turquoise color, but very dark. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a little bit more of that white. And there it is. There's our beautiful turquoise color. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start to apply this in all of our background here. 
And as I apply this in the background, I do little cross strokes. Now you can do sweeping strokes back and forth, or you can do this little cross stroke like what I'm doing. So either way on this one, the cross stroke is a little bit more expressive and textural. The other thing that I do that's fun is I'll pick up a little bit of white as I go too, and just kind of mix that into the background. And just crisscross this back and forth. And then as I come close to the lettering here, I'm gonna go ahead and cover that just so you don't have to worry about all that cut in work, all that detail. That permanent marker will bleed through. Another thing you can do is because there's so much in this background, you could also actually just paint in all your background first and then just go ahead and put your transfer paper over the top and do your line work and everything once your background is already done. I do highly recommend that. If you just have a lot more time at home to let it set up and dry, that's actually a lot easier. So again, just keep crisscrossing this. Back and forth, little letter X's. And I also try to just hold my brush more over to the side, which allows more of that flat side of the brush to just gently go across the canvas. Definitely a lighter hand on that. And this is what we're gonna do all the way around our cute little cat. So a little bit of cut in here. Now I have to shift how I hold the brush. Hold it more on the line edge. Check your edge, make sure it's not too filled with paint. Mine's in pretty good shape, so that edge is still pretty thin and I can still do my cut-in work. I'll come all around here. I keep meaning to do this cat, or rather this kind of painting with a dog, and I haven't done that yet, I need to. A little puppy dog with coffee would be cute too. Lots of white just kind of swishes in and around. And if it gets a little bit too, I'm going to be able to be okay, I think, for most of this. But if you get into some tiny areas where you want to switch gears and do like your little bit brush, sometimes that can be helpful for some of this cut-in work that has these little tiny curves to it. So you can just knock that part out. But then you want to switch back to your mama brush for all the larger work in the background. Go ahead and wash out my little bit, put it off to the side. Cut in and then feather it out and then blend that back into the background with that really fun textural little cross stroke. And around that scarf. And if you go over your black a little bit, no worries, you can always reinforce that towards the end of the class. Because we'll be going back over everything with any black details at the very end too. Everybody's having a super great day.
keeping relaxed, keeping calm, stay encouraged. Praying everybody has lots of hope and great plans for Thanksgiving. this over to the other side. Grabbing more of that turquoise and white. Little crisscross strokes. Cross back and forth and grab a little white as we go feather that out crisscross back and forth Get your little crisscross action. Just feathering that out back and forth. And let's grab a little bit more white. And let's do a little bit of white up here too. Just want to make sure I kind of take a look back and see if I'm balanced on that. All right, feather out any abrupt brush strokes here, and I think we are good. All right. So yay, we have our background done. I'm gonna go ahead and take my mama brush and wash this off. Mo is on here. <laughs> hey, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> and hello, hello everybody. If I cannot see your comment, I will catch it later, I promise. All right, so now we need to mix up some gray. So I cleaned off Mama, she's all ready to go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a nice big dollop of white and then let's do a little tiny touch of the black. A little tiny touch and then let's push that in. Now you can make your kitty cat any color you want. So be creative. And then I've got this whole, I kinda have to pay attention to where I'm at here. So this is the cat body down here. So I've got gray happening here. Do a line edge around this, this little curve. I'm gonna go ahead and leave his little paw. No, I'm gonna color that gray too then, okay. I was trying to remember what I did there. I thought maybe I left it white, but no, we'll keep that gray. Yeah, but I've done black cats, I've done golden cats. Done this painting a lot. A lot of fun.
cute little to-go cup of coffee. That sounds good right now, doesn't it? <laughs> we always have coffee in the morning. We always think about our biggest and best dreams. We do our dreaming big, our dream big plans, have a cup of coffee. Actually, more like three cups of coffee. <laughs> That's what it takes anymore. And then, seems like about four. We always want more coffee. And then we go get more coffee. It's a good thing it's good for you. Maybe not as much as we have it, but <laughs> everything in moderation. We have a lot of coffee around here. We love it. All right, so we got our gray there. I am going to do the little pause, but I need a smaller brush with that. And I've got gray happening here too but this is pretty tiny in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and let's mix up more and then I'll wash off this brush. So I'm mixing up a little bit more black with my white, getting lots of gray to work with. I'm gonna squeegee out that brush, wash out mama, cause we're gonna have to switch gears to little buddy. Little buddy and little bit. My two precious little kiddos here. So, let's take little buddy first and get it loaded up with some of that light gray. And go into that little paw. Then we'll do the other one. Yay, good job everybody. And then let's do the little ear. And you can hold the brush a little bit more like a pencil when you're doing line work to get around an edge. And then when you're filling into a larger area, then you wanna turn that handle more over to the side to help fill in and feather out those brush strokes there. I've got a lot of line work to do around this eyewear here, these cute little glasses. And I need to check my, so let's see. The eyes, hmm. I think I'm gonna leave those as just more white at this point. Be a little bit easier. So I think I have all the gray that I wanna do. Maybe a softer gray. Let's try a little bit of that softer gray in the eyes here. So let's add a little bit more white. With that light gray. Let's do a little touch of that. And when it comes to those eyelashes, they're so light and delicate that I will come back in and reinforce some of this with the black later because I'm having a little bit of some overpaint just to get the gray in here. But I'll fix it here in just a little bit. Alright, so that is our really pretty light gray in there. And 
let's do a light pink nose. All right, so for this in our paint kit, we have some primary magenta, and then we'll have some white. We'll mix those two together. So you need just a little tiny touch here. So there's our magenta color. And then I'm gonna pick up some white. Just a little bit. And a little bit more of white, because we want a super, super light, light pink. So we'll work that into this cute little nose. some green all right so with our kit here we have some bright yellow green and then also some cadmium green and we'll just do a nice nickel sized dollop of each one of these I'll give you a visual here. Nice equal parts. And then let's mix those together. And this is my Little Buddy brush. And then before I start to use Little Buddy, I wanna make sure that I still have my nice line edge. So I'm gonna kind of apply some firm pressure here, get that back out to a thin point. And I'm gonna go ahead and work into my little wreath here. So initially, sometimes I have to use the line edge of the brush to cut in around these little shapes here. And then I will start to feather those out using the flat side of the brush. Awesome. And then we have our little glasses we need to do too. So I need to definitely make sure I'm back to a thin line edge here before I get going on this. And for some of these little turns, I may have to switch over to my little bit. We shall see. And then turn it over to the side to help kind of feather this in, fill into the larger area. Take this all the way around. Almost there. And then we'll feather out any areas, smooth out brush strokes, get a better second coat of paint. Trying to hold that brush as much as possible over on the flat side of the brush. <gasps> My mommy's on here again. Hi, mommy. <laughs> Love you, mom. I'm gonna be here uh, pretty much all day painting, I think. 
That's how far behind I am. Thank you, Ice Storm 2020. <laughs> so much for getting these all spread out. Yeah. That's okay. It's a great day. It's a great day when you get to paint all day. All right. Feather that out. It's looking super cute. Make sure I got everything. Okay, so next up will be our red details. So rinse out little buddy, dry little buddy off. And then let's go back to our red plate here. In your kit, you will have some cadmium red, which is a warm red. And then of course you have that Primary Magenta, which I love. You can see how much I love it. I use a lot of this one. And let's see. Yeah, it seems like I love it a lot because I'm trying to find oh, a little tube of it. I use that one a lot. So I'm going to do a nice dollop of the, just about medium sized dollop of the Cadmium Red, and then I'm going to do a little dollop of this Primary Magenta. And then we're gonna mix all that together. And then this will give us a cool red. Cooler in tone. So, all right, now I'm using my mama brush to paint this in. We're doing our little scarf here. Make sure I do not do the coffee cup. Gotta make sure where I'm at with this line work here. So this is another section of the scarf here. And then I'll come back in with the flat side of the brush and cut in around those edges. We'll do some fringe off of this scarf here too in a minute. You know what would be cute on this scarf, which I thought of this earlier, is some buffalo check on here would be really cute. And you could just really graph that out with your ruler and just make sure you have the same size distance between each line you put lines in vertical vertically and then horizontally and I have lots of lessons with buffalo check if you need to find them just look for a painting with buffalo check and, uh, as a matter of fact I just did one yesterday with buffalo check and it's very detailed, the instruction on that design with the Buffalo Tech is really, really good. I spent a lot of time with it. All right, now I'm feathering out. It's looking good. Oh, I have a little ribbon right here too. You know what, I need to switch brushes. All right, let's wash out Mama Brush. And let's go to our little buddy. And then we'll fill in our little ribbon here. So again, holding it more like a pencil for cutting in and then getting better saturation of color over the top, turn the brush handle over to the side Just fill all the sand here.
And then I want to feather out these brush strokes. I want to turn that handle more over to the side. Flat side of the brush faces the canvas and this will give you much better texture and more of an opaque red right over the top. And that's our cute little red bow and our scarf. Now I'm gonna do some little lines. I think I saw a question um, in studio classes. I'll be sure and put some links, because yes we do, and I'll put some links when I'm done. Hey, thank you for asking. All right, so I'm gonna do firm pressure here, little line edge, and then I'm going to do just tiny little dashes outside of this. Like our little fringe coming off the end here. That's nice. I like that. And I'm going to go ahead. I've got some that I pre-mixed this earlier. There's just a tiny amount of actual violet in there, which we do have Ta -da, some violet. I'm going to darken this up just right here at the end and just kind of pounce in. So I'm basically just kind of tap, tap, tap on the side of the brush like that and just kind of tapping in a little bit of texture. It's that same color mix we just had with our magenta and red, and this is a little bit of violet in there too. So I'm tapping in some of that texture. And let's just outline there too. Looking good. All right, now we need to add a little bit of decoration to our wreath here. So I am going to be using my mama brush and the handle for a fun little technique. So I just barely dip into the white here. And you can see it on the end of the handle and then I'll just press straight forward and I'll take this all the way around oops see that one was really tiny so I'm going to reinforce it man why is it going tiny like that that's weird let's do it again ah ta-da See, this is such a fun and easy technique. You could even polka dot all of your scarf. You could polka dot the glasses. That'd be kind of fun, actually. Let's do that. And you could make your dots even smaller. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do that just for safe measure. The glass, the eyeglasses are a little bit tiny, so I'm gonna go ahead and come in with a little bit. Small white dot and continue the polka dot with a smaller brush handle because we don't want a surprise of a really big dot happening in the frame. That would be uh, not fun to deal with actually. So we'll keep taking this all the way around. I think that's really cute. Makes me want some polka dot glasses too. Sometimes you get a little bit more mileage out of some of these little dots. You don't have to reload every single time. But you can see how it makes the same uniform dot just about every time. And you can also just come back and reinforce some to make them a little bit thicker. If you want. Okay, so 
super cute. Wipe that off. And then we've got some accents with our white for sure here. All right, so a little bit brush and I do a little twist here into the white paint. And so on this one, we'll do like a little parentheses, another little parentheses, and just two little sketches out to the side. Just highlight. Do a little bit there. I'm gonna wipe off the brush. I had a little bit of excess red on there, so I'm gonna get back to a pure state here. And we'll get some more pure white. sketch in here in the ears. And then to make our little flash points in the eye, they'll take the end of the brush, just kind of push straight forward. It'll make a nice even flash point over those eyes there. And a little bit of reflective light here. Now I need to come back in with a little bit of some of the black now and help detail some of this out. So still using little bit brush. And we're gonna go ahead and just twist right into the black. And we'll start to just outline a little bit, very carefully. and just firm up any of those black lines, especially those places where we maybe had a little bit of overpaint done. And they're really long lines. I'm gonna come back in with a longer line brush and work those in, but for right now, These little tiny areas with little curves, I'm gonna use my little bit brush. And it just really kind of helps tidy everything up here. Because again, we just we did have a little bit of overpainting in the beginning. And everything starts to pop out quite a bit when you've got your outline around it. Okay, we're getting real close. And then definitely need to rework some of the detail in the eyes and you can always use your permanent marker to do that. because that's definitely a lot easier for most people. Especially these really tiny little details. So I gotta be really, very delicate, very light hand, just barely touch the canvas. And that's why we put those permanent markers in there now too, because we just, we have found that they're definitely much more beginner friendly for a lot of the detail work. I'm really 
I did it again. My eyeglass frame is real close to my eye there. I'm gonna feather that out and make that gray in there. What happens if the eyeglass frame gets a, just, it's amazing how just the slightest nuance can make the cat look a little bit angry. Of course, a lot of cats are angry, honestly. <laughs> So if that happens, you might just want to keep it and go, yeah, that's that's my cat. My cat's pretty angry. But, ah, see? Lighten that mood. <laughs> yeah, want to lighten that mood a little bit. Get rid of that angry cat. So I need to make sure that frame, that black line gets... towards the top and not close to the eye. Yeah, it's kind of a thing. It's very, the features of the eye are very delicate and one little touch can really take it to a very different direction in terms of expression, so you do wanna be careful with that. And again, that's why I say you could even, if you feel like this is even too thick, you could even come in with just a ballpoint pen too and just make your features very delicate in that area. Using my pinky, it's a little trick I use where I rest the weight of my hand on my pinky and that helps stabilize my hand as I do this. Just watch, make sure your pinky doesn't dab into wet paint and you go speckling the rest of your painting. I've done that before too. So you do have to kind of watch out for that. Patient process. <laughs> okay, I think I've got all my eyewear done. Let's get this little scarf. Get that outline happening. get everything. Okay, I've still got a little bit of line work here and here and then on the edge of the coffee cup. All right. Painting from the side, sometimes it's hard to see and then when I look at it at the very end from the front, then I go, oh, but I think I've got everything except for that line there. I do want to use a line edge of my little buddy brush. It's a lot easier. Actually, with a long line like that, I think I'm gonna actually come back in with Mama. I need to make sure she has no excess water. Just moist, so there's Mama. And I'm gonna go ahead and push into the black paint and see how nice and thin and long that is. So that's actually the easiest brush to work with. If it's a really long line like that, much easier and I may have to lift up. So I can get all the way down to the edge. And then I'll do the other side. All the way down. Okay. Let's 
scoot that, oh, no, I guess you need that closer. There we go, okay. All right. Now all we need to do are the letters. And with your at-home kit, I think it's actually a lot easier. I mentioned in the very beginning that you can actually just paint your whole background and then do your line art right over the top, in which case all your lettering would actually already be done at this point. Um, so you can take your permanent marker, which I think is a lot easier for lettering, and you can go ahead and just follow along It's got a lot of saturated color there, but I think I can still make it out. Lot of love. Lots of love. <laughs> and then of course you can sign your masterpiece. Again, you just want to make sure your paint is dry. So I'll do a quick signature here. Yay. All right, so I think we're done with this cute little cat, cute little Christmas cat. Yay! So everything you need for this kit is on our website, tipsyartist.com. And so we love painting with you. We keep the video up forever so you can come back and watch it anytime. And you have the ability to rewind or fast forward and all that good stuff too to help out as well. But thank you again for joining me. Had so much fun with y'all today. And I'm gonna take a quick break and uh, I'll be back here in just a few minutes. We'll be painting another painting. So going live a lot today. Y'all have a beautiful day. See you soon.